All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a grapple hook in Godot 4. All I have here is a super simple scene with some cubes that we can grapple on. Um, and then I have a player controller. Um, pretty basic. The one requirement for your FPS controller, if you don't already have one, is that you implement uh, acceleration and deceleration. Um, apart from that, it should be fine. I'll leave this down in the description so you can copy it if you want. All I have on the player is a mesh instance, a collision shape, and a camera 3D. So with that said, let's go ahead and get right into how to make the grapple hook. So the first thing we're going to do is add a raycast 3D to our camera. So I'm going to add this to the scene and just drag it to be under our camera. And now we want to have it shoot out um, wherever we're looking. So I'm going to set this to negative, I don't know, 50. And then make sure that Y is set to zero, that way it doesn't curve down. And then I'm just going to go ahead and reset the transform so that it's centered on the camera. Okay, so the next thing we need is a just a basic node. This will be called grapple controller. And let's go ahead and attach a script here. Um, so starting out here with a blank script, the first thing we're going to need is a few variables. The first one is the ray cast that we just created. So I'm just going to make an export variable, call it ray. This will have a type of ray cast uh, 3D. The next variable we're going to need is the rest length. This is basically just saying um, when the grappling hook should stop pulling. Um, what we're going to do here is basically make a spring simulation. This is using Hooke's Law. Um, and you can look up some more information on it if you want to learn more about how this all works. Um, but the next variable we need is a variable for the stiffness. Uh, this is the stiffness of the spring. So just picture, you know, instead of a rope that retracts, we just have a really big spring. Um, how stiff do we want that spring to be? In other words, how fast do we want to pull the player back towards uh, whatever it grappled to? Um, I'm just going to set this to 10 to start. And then we're going to make another variable. This will be damping. Um, this will go over later. This will basically just, um, rather than constantly bobbing up and down, it'll eventually kind of fade away if you're just grappled to one point for a long time. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is head into our physics process function. So function physics process. Um, and then the first thing we need to do is check if we pressed our shoot key. I went ahead and set this up in my project settings. You can see I have shoot bound to my left mouse button. So if input is action just pressed shoot, then we will go ahead and launch. However, if we just pressed, if we just released shoot, then we will retract. Um, and let's go ahead and make a va another variable here. This will be called launched is equal to false. Okay. Um, and then if we're launched, then we're going to go ahead and call um, handle grapple and we'll pass delta in here so let's go ahead and make these functions real quick so we'll have unc launch um, another one for retract and then finally handle handle grapple this one will take in a delta variable and there we go that's all we need to get started here so in our launch function, the first thing we want to do is set launched equal to true, but we need to make sure that the ray cast is actually hitting something that we can grab onto. So the first thing we're going to do is check if ray dot is colliding, then we will go ahead and set launched equal to true, but we also need another variable to track where the ray hit and where we should grapple towards. So I'm going to make another variable of our target, this will be a vector three. So let's go ahead and set the target equal to um, the ray's collision point using ray.getCollisionPoint. 
Um, to retract, all we're going to do is just set launched equal to false. All right, so there we go. Super easy. Um, the next thing we need to do is handle the actual grapple physics. So up here, I'm going to make an on ready variable to get access to our player. So on ready var player. Our player is a character body 3D, so that's what I'm going to set it as. That's going to be equal to get parent. Okay. Um, what we want to do in handle grapple. The first thing we're going to do is get the target direction. So target direction or dir for short. And then this will be our player dot global position. And we're going to get the direction to our target grapple point. Um, and then we're going to make another variable for target distance or target dist for short. This will be player dot global position dot uh, distance to the target. Um, and then we need a variable for displacement. So since we're simulating a spring here, displacement is kind of just how far we have stretched the spring past its resting length. And the resting length is how long it is when there's no stretching involved. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate that. So displacement is equal to target distance minus our rest length. Okay. Um, and then we're going to make a variable to hold our force that we will apply to the player. This will be vector 3.0 to start. Then in an if statement, we'll check if there is actually some displacement. In other words, if displacement is greater than zero, then here we want to actually apply some physics because now we know that the spring is stretched. So now I want to just pull it back um, and pull the player along with it. So let's go ahead and make a variable to hold the spring's um, magnitude, spring force magnitude, if I could type. Um, this is going to equal to stiffness times displacement. Okay, so the higher your stiffness value up here, it's 10 right now, the higher the stiffness is, the faster the spring will retract. Um, and then we'll make another variable for the spring force itself. Basically, the spring force magnitude is how strong the force is. The spring force is what we'll actually apply. Um, and then this will be equal to target direction times spring force magnitude there. So basically, we're just um, applying the direction that needs to be put in. Okay. The next thing we need to do is get our velocity dot product. I'm going to just call this vel, we'll call it vel dot. And this will be player dot velocity, whoops, velocity. And then we'll use the dot function on this. And then we're going to use target direction. So the dot product is kind of complicated to explain super quickly, but basically we want to know um, the player's velocity and the direction of the target direction. So the dot product will give us just a number and that'll tell us our momentum towards the target direction and only towards the target direction. Okay. Um, this is so that we can apply some damping here. So var damping will be equal to our negative damping value and we'll multiply that by a vel dot and then our target um, direction. Okay. Um, what's next? The next thing we need to do is actually set our force value up here. So force is equal to spring force times our, or I'm sorry, plus our damping value. Okay. And then last but not least, we need to actually apply this to our player's velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and set player dot velocity plus equals force times delta. And with that, we should be pretty much ready to go. Um, what I'm going to do up here is in the grapple controller, make sure you assign the ray. And with that done, you can see we can move around. And if I grab onto that, you can see we get pulled towards it. But we're obviously missing something, and that's a rope. I'm not going to get into a actual you know, fancy rope 
that has physics on it. I'm just going to do a super easy um, roof in 3D. This is basically just a line. Um, Godot does not have 3D lines, which is kind of annoying, um, but we're going to basically make a fake one. So uh, we need a new scene for the rope. I'm just going to come up here, new scene, and we're just going to use a node 3D. I'm going to rename this to rope. rope. I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to add a mesh instance 3D to this mesh instance 3D. This will be your actually actual rope mesh. So I'm just going to use a uh, we'll use a cylinder, um, and then I'm going to come down to transform. The first thing I'm going to do is rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, and then this is in a really important part. Um, first, let's go ahead and shrink this down. Actually, so 0.1 should work. We might go, eh, let's go 0 0.05 uh, for the top and bottom radius in the mesh. Um, and then what we're going to do is shift this over, okay, so that it is, um, so that the left side of the mesh is on the center point in the world. And the reason we do this is because when you scale a object like a mesh instance 3D, um, it will scale in the wow there we go okay yeah you can see it scales out from the middle and we don't really want that it's way easier if we scale it from the left or the right side so the way to fix that is just to position it so that it's right there um, in this case um, we moved it negative one on the z-axis and now if you come up to the rope, transform, and then you scale it, whoops, scale it on, let me unlock this, if I could find the right one, there we go. You can see we can now extend it out positive Z direction. Okay, uh, you can add your own material to this if you want. I'm just gonna leave it white. Uh, the next thing we need is access to that rope. So let's make a variable here, export var rope. This will just be a node 3D. Um, and let's actually go ahead and add the rope to our player here. So we're just gonna come down here, drag it in there. And I'm gonna set this to invisible by default. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make a new function down here at the bottom in our grapple controller. This will be called update, update rope. Um, and the first thing we wanna check is if the, if we're launched, then we obviously don't want to see the rope. I'm sorry, if we're not launched, we don't want to see the rope. So if not launched, then rope.visible is equal to false, and we don't want to do anything else, so I'm just going to set this to return. However, if the rope is launched, then we can go ahead and set it to visible. Okay. And then we just need to get the distance to our target. So dist is equal to player global position dot distance to and then this will be the target all right and then we will go ahead and call the look at function so rope dot look at the um, the target okay and then we'll just scale the rope based on the distance so vector 3 1 1 because we want to leave that all default and we'll set this to distance um, and then down here after we do everything else we'll just call update rope then of course come into your grapple controller and make sure you assign the rope and with that let's see if that worked okay I think it did, but I cannot see the rope. I can see the shadow of it. Can't see the rope though. Why is that? Oh, there we go. So I think what was happening there, um, the rope was inside the camera where the camera is inside the rope, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, so I could not see it. Um, so there you go, there's a really basic grapple hook, it uses Hooke's Law. This is basically equivalent to something you'd find in Unity using the spring. I'm 
which is a common method I've seen. Um, so yeah, it works well, pretty easy to implement. The last thing that I always like to do is make it so you can jump um, off of a grapple. So down here where I check if we're on the floor, I also just add a or statement. And of course we're gonna need access to our grapple controller. So already var, I'm just gonna call this GC, is gonna be equal to grapple controller. And then if gc.launched, there we go. So now if I come down here and I jump off of it, oh right, the, one th the other thing I like to do is make it so that we're no longer um, grappling. So I'm just gonna call gc.retract. All right, so there we go. You can see I can now come in here and I can jump off of the grapple, which makes it a lot more fun, in my opinion. You can obviously, you know, spruce this up however you want, add some polish to it. Um, but there you go. Really basic, really easy grapple hook in Godot 4. And uh, yeah. That's about all I have for you guys, so I'll see you guys in the next one.